Hi everyone, CG Seb here and welcome to the guide for the beginners to use Fluent for Art Surface. So Fluent is an add-on for Blender. Uh, you can find the link in the description and install it. After you install Fluent, we're going to start by pressing F and click on Create. Then right click to show the grid, start drawing from the center by clicking in the middle and move your mouse while holding Ctrl plus Shift to make it a square. Once you are happy with the size, click again and it will adjust the height. To validate, click. If you hold click, you will see the menu and you can place your mouse on first bevel. Then move your mouse to adjust the bevel. Right click to validate the base shape. All right, now that we have the main shape, let's add some details on the top. Press F, select Cut, Add Tool, and right click on the top to show the grid. Go on the top view and draw from the center while holding Ctrl plus Shift. Click to validate and move your mouse to the left to subtract and click to validate when you are happy with the depth. Hold click and select first bevel, go to the top view and adjust. Again, click to validate and right click to complete the fluent action. If we show the wireframe, by selecting the object, pressing F and select Hide Show Wireframe, we can see that we have some lines that are not placed correctly. To fix this, go to Edit Mode, press Ctrl plus R, right click to place it in the middle and go to the Object Mode. The model looks weird but we're going to fix it by going into the Fluent menu and select Toolbox and VG Cleaner. Let's add more details on the top by showing the Boolean object. To do this, press the key greater than, lower than, or go to the Fluent menu and select Hide Show Boolean Object. Select the boolean and use the cut add tool. Draw a square inside the boolean and make sure it goes deeper than the boolean object itself. Add a bevel, right click to complete the action. To prevent having some issues, in the future, we will select the boolean, go to edit mode, and add more support lines once again. Now we are going to add a hole on top. Use the cut tool and go to the shape tool by pressing S. Make sure the white cross is in the middle of the grid and press A. Adjust the grid and go to the side view so we see what we are doing. Draw from the middle line and click on the next dot to make a shape. Finish it by clicking on the dot in the middle line and right click. You might have some artifact like this. To fix it, Hold the click and select Flip Normal. I would like a bevel here, so go to the edit mode and select the vertex. Move it on the Y axis until you see a bevel. Go back to object mode and right click to complete. We see some issue here. 
let's show the wireframe so we can see better. The two next lines are too close to each other. Show the boolean and select the middle one. Press R and Z to rotate it until the issue is gone. Make sure everything looks fine. It looks a bit too simple on the top, so I will add some holes. Use the cut tool and right click on top face. Press C to switch to the circle and draw from the center. At first, it will not do anything because we are in the hole. Use the circle array. Click to validate and rotate it on the X axis by 45 degrees. It's a bit too close to the center, so I will go to the circular array again and move it to the side. Now we will add details on the sides with the slice tool. Use the rectangle and draw from the outside of the object. Make sure to have the object inside the rectangle and click. Move your mouse to the left and make it go through the entire object by pressing V. We now have two separate objects. To be done with the top part, I will add a cut, use the rectangle tool in the middle and go to the circular array. Select the top part and use the insert tool. Draw a rectangle wider than the object and press V to go through the object. You might have some issues with the bevel here. You can adjust the depth. And alright, looks good for the top now. We have issues on the top and it's because the first bevel goes too deep and collides with the inset that we just created. Select the boolean and select edit in the fluent menu. Adjust the solidify until the issue is gone. Now we are taking care of the sides. The first step is a slice. I will mirror it to the other side. Click to validate the mirror and right click to complete the fluent object. To make a slice goes a bit outside, we need to select it and scale it on the x-axis. Add a cut on the top to add more details to it. Then mirror it to the other side. I will show you a cool trick you can do with the cut tool using the shape tool. Press S and go to the side view. Adjust the grid so we have more details. Start drawing like so. We're gonna make a shape that you can find in a sci-fi world. Once you're happy with it, don't click anywhere. 
and press spacebar. Instead of creating a shape, it will be a line. If you have issues like this, you need to adjust the thickness. It's looking good, so we mirror it to the other side. If it's not deep enough, you will have problems like this. Show the boolean, select it, and edit it in Fluent menu. Now it's good, we can complete it. I'm going to use the Add tool on the side where we have nothing yet. You can reduce the resolution here and draw from the center a small rectangle. We will add a bevel. Looks a bit too much, so I will reduce the solidify. With the array tool, make two of them and click to validate. I'm gonna add a support edge here so we have less issues in the future. Let's add some holes onto those shapes that we just created. Don't worry, I will move them just after this. Use the array tool and choose an offset that you like. Once you have the offset, press C to change the number of holes. Move them up, then go to the side view to see better. You might have some artifacts to fix it, as you might guess. We need to show the booleans. Select this one. Go to edit mode and add an edge. I added two edges, but you probably need one. Now the topology is correct. I will move them to the bottom and then duplicate them with shift D and Z to move it on the top. To make it affect the object, we select the boolean, then the main object, and in the Fluent menu, we click on boolean. We can right click since it's already good. Great, go to the other side and cut a rectangle. Complete the shape. For the rest of the video, you will need power trip version of Fluent. The one with the grids, pipes, and wires. Show the booleans, select this one, press F, and click on the grid. Hold click and choose a grid shape. You can adjust the size and also the position of the grid. As always, right click to complete the shape. I will add some wires behind the grid. Position your camera behind the grid and hold Ctrl then click to put the start point in the middle of the face. Rotate to see the top and again, hold Ctrl plus click on the face. If you hold click, you can see the different options we have like radius or array tool. If you want to have more wires, like the other array tools, you can change the offset and the number of elements. I think I will put them back as they were, like this. We have a very good looking model now. 
Here is the cloth panel. I recommend you to set it up like this so we can have the same result. Select the top part, click on cloth panel tool, select all the faces and press enter. The simulation can take a while depending on your computer. Nice detail, isn't it? The last touch, we will be adding wires on the side. Don't forget to hold control click to have the wire start and end in the middle of the face. The root strength is useful to adjust the length of the wire. Add a ring so it looks more realistic. To add another ring to the other side, select back to curve and click again on add a ring. Change the position of the second ring Now we can complete. I will repeat the same for the others. We can use the reuse option to reuse the same settings of the first wire. Add a ring and again reuse option, then click on the ring to copy the settings. If you change the root strength after adding a ring, you might need to adjust the position of the ring. To select the ring, select the wire, press R. It will select the first one and press R again to select the second one. Now you can adjust the position and we can complete the object. Now you know how to make the third one, so I'm gonna let you make it. Here we are, we're done with the modeling part. Uh, you can see the second part where I'm going to do the texturing for this object. And also, uh, don't forget to practice and take example on ArtStation, for example, or Pinterest, and start by making simple objects, practice a little bit, uh, and this is the key to actually improve your modeling. So, see you in part two.